Greetings, you tubulators and tubulons. What you're looking at now is the frame of my little TR6. I reckon. I wonder if they boxed this in. Oh, hey, yeah. That's that's a plus. This is the frame, and uh, I reckon it's ready to go. So all that I got to do is do the rest of this stuff. I pulled it up off the flame and uh, I was going to fix holes in the floorboard as soon as I found them. But I haven't seen just a whole heck of a bunch I can impress on. But, uh, there's plenty topside that I can work on. I'm not going to be too disappointed doing that. But I'm going to cover everything you see down here with a good tarp. And then I can go ahead and start doing my rust, my rusticles. And get her paint, get the bottom half painted. I think that's the way I need to do. And then I can put it back on the flame and uh, do what's right down there. But that will come to pass. Be nice to get some white on it since I'm going to paint this this little rascal white. But I got to treat all this stuff and take it all back off and make it like it's supposed to be. And there's plenty of stuff for me to work on topside, and then it'll be happy, happy little car. Happy little car. Oh, that wind is terrific. So, yeah, I got it tied to the ceiling. Roof rafters. And then I got my cherry pricker here hung up on it. Which, by the time I got out here this morning after yesterday, uh, cherry picker had uh, eased off. And all it was holding it was... Uh, my little safety strap thingies, the ropes, so it didn't pull the roof down on it. Thank the good Lord. So uh, that's a good thing. Everything's coming up roses. And the poor little muskrang is, uh, I think I found an engine for it. So uh, I'll check it out this weekend. Hardy har har. And uh, with some help from the neighbor, maybe, if he's around, we'll get this anchor pulled out and put on the, rolled off the hill, and I'll have a nice little engine put back in it so I can scooter around in it this summer. Who knows? It may be a Mustang coming to see you. You never know, or it could be a TR6 coming to see you. Ah, as bad as I like Jeeps and stuff, that still looks kind of goofy to have it jacked up like that. But anyway, I've got enough jacked up Jeeps that probably need to go away. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. That's going to be a short one, isn't it, boys and gals? Uh, nothing going on inside, I don't reckon, but I'll, you know, we can go in here anyway. There's the operating table and the other stuff. And the intake that weighs 500 pounds, I had to grab off of there. Uh, okay, 
Let me let me show you something, some stupidity that I do. When you're, when I am, get up here, boy. <laughs> when I uh, uh, prime an engine with oil, I don't like to pull the distributor because one time in fifty, the darn distributor drive comes out of the oil pump and tingle tangles up in the oil pan and you're done. So what I do is I take the come on come on Larry I take the oil pressure sending unit out and I put me a nozzle in there and get me a little hand pump with oil in it and I pump it up there and once it fills up the oil filter you can hear it look a mouse has already been up in here holy crap I'm trying to talk here and gee many Christmas holy cow uh you can hear it gurgle up through the the uh, valve covers and in there and too it'll go all the way through the the cam and the rocker arms you know you just pressurize it down there and when you're done, you just screw that back in. And Viola, you're done. You don't have to pull the nasty distributor. And uh, I think that'll work on any engine. I know it works on Chevrolet six cylinders, and that works on any engine. And uh, when I was pulling the the uh, the bearings out of this crankshaft to put it in there. Uh, I used two different things. The crank's got holes in it. Oil holes. I wonder if I can show you on this. On the 428 crank. Anyway, where the oil holes is here, you put your cutter key in there. And you and when you roll it over, it'll catch the edge of the main bearing and it'll whiz it out of there. It'll catch it and it'll when you return it it'll whiz it out of there. That's how you get the top side out. Sometime oh the rod bearings work better, I think, if you just straighten out a rod bearing and then you can scoot the rod bearing up behind the crank and push it out that way. It don't take much to push a rod bearing out. And you can push the piston up in there from below, and the rod bearing would just come free. Ugh. If I can find, where is my cotter key? There's a cotter key. There's a cotter key cat dog. Hi, dog. What's going on, Shelly Jean? What is the baby? But, see, you can just. Cram one of these in it. You can. There. And you can tap it down flat or whatever you need to do. Usually they'll they'll mold to the bottom of the engine. And you just turn it around and this catches there. This catches the bearing and whizzes the bearing out. And then you just grab it and pull it out and put it in the next one. That's how you get that out. If you're so inclined. I'll put that back in there all nice and queasy. <clears throat> but that's what you do if you do stuff like me, which is the wrong way to do it. And I want to talk about caulking for just a minute. Uh, I've built back when I was able I built lots of cars that had to go had to be right I don't build nothing right nowadays but every time that I've been around any any uh, caulking there's rust this caulking I don't know why you uh, and I thought you had to have this seam sealer and stuff like that on them and everywhere I put it 
and everywhere I've taken it off. Uh, it seems like rust hides under it. So instead of doing the seam sealing, uh, I always prepare the metal really, really good where a seam would be. And uh, I make sure that's clean and rust free. And I put, if I have to, if I'm thinking it's going to be a wet place, I put a double layer of paint there. You know, of course, you use. You know, good, good uh, rust-proof stuff under it, and then paint. I'd rather see paint in these grooves than a bunch of this blobby stuff here that just begs to catch to catch uh, moisture behind it. It won't do it for a while, but after you, uh, after a few years, it dries out. It's just a nice pocket to hide uh, evil. So I don't use uh, that seam sealer and stuff anymore. I just make sure I got a good layer of paint in there, or maybe two layers. And uh, that seems to work better for me when I go back into it, if I have to go back into it. But that's my prerogative. And, uh, you know, y'all do what you want. But that's the way the world twirls on my uh, 55 half acres. Let me shut the lights off. And I'll be returning to this this morning here directly. And there'll be a weeping of the gnashing of teeth when I cut stuff off of Harold. Uh, Harold's underside has already been stripped and painted. And the frame's been stripped and painted separately. So it's, it's sitting on go. It just needs the top side. Okay, it's a beautiful day here in Arkansas. We had storms again last night, and it didn't do nothing but kill a few trees. Lightning killed a few trees. And uh, no more babies that I know of. It's been uh, goaded kids. I guess they call them a kid. They're a little bit like a kid. They play around and bounce. Well, good thing I didn't step in that. Nah! I wonder if I can zoom this out into the pit, into the things. Nah! Well, that's a, that's a goat for you. So, oh, and I'm, um, I'm putting some high heat gray or silver flat on the headers I got with this engine and it said to uh, that's what we got in the mail let's look at the mail here northern that's no good uh, Marianne's got a discover card and state farm insurance there so that's about it that's what I got Got my neighbor's brother coming up the road. So I'll say, sorry not you to you. And I love you. Take care. Bye.